So yesterday, <clears throat> we talked about two different topics. So topic number one was related to product master enhancement, in which we talk about enhancement related to product master. And we talked about that, like this is a very interesting uh, capability and uh, it's a very powerful functionality. So we talked about this functionality So we talked about this functionality, this capability of product master enhancement. This is actually very cool functionality. Very, very cool functionality. And uh, it allows you to do a lot of different functions. That is why it is called, uh, that is why I call it very cool because we can do two various functions in it. We can do various capabilities in it. And uh, that is why I call it very cool me. What you can do here, uh, you know, in SAP product master attribute, if you want to do the same thing in a SAP SD, it is a lot of enhancement, a lot of work, which you cannot do. And it's very difficult. And uh, that is why this functionality is extremely important. Okay. So, and we did that. We created a uh, you know, different attributes like color and size, monitor, we create attributes search, we create a category, we create a hierarchy, and we assign this category hierarchy to a, to a product master, and then we saw that how this product master uh, can be defined. And it is a very neat functionality. It's a very, very cool functionality which we can do with SAP CRM. And uh, similar function if you wanna do in SAP SG, it's not possible. Uh, when I say it's not possible means it will require a lot of, uh, you know, custom development and all that and all that if you want to do the same thing in a SAP uh, SG. So, then we did some exercise, which is transactional exercise. So we did some transactional exercise. In the transactional exercise, we talked about yesterday, in which we create a quotation, transaction, the standard quotation type, with dot transaction using dot transaction type AG. Create an appointment. Create 
we also create a cell sort of with reference to quotation so these are the exercise we did we create a quotation with a standard document type ag we create an uh, appointment now if i want to do appointment and this activity that appointment and this kind of activity you can do it in crm you cannot do that in sd this functionality is very very cool and these functionality a lot of these functionality has been carried forward in sap sps for hana so when you learn a lot of these functions and capabilities in sap crm you are learning some of the new technologies and functions which sap has carry forward in sap s4 hana so that is one of the important point for us to understand because a lot of these uh, neat neat, uh, neat functionalities has been carry forward to the future new dimensional product like sap s4 hana for example then we did a configuration in the configuration we configure a new transaction type we configure a new item category we configure a new item category determination and then we tested it we created a new transaction type z012 now this is very important and this function is very important good morning uh, david good morning raghavendra good morning everyone and then we tested a new sales document type now one thing which i mentioned yesterday that this concept of transaction processing this concept of transaction type and item category and item category determination all of this concept is very similar between sd and crm so the meaning purpose of document type item category item category determination is very similar on both sides this is a very important point to understand so we are learning when we are learning these concept in crm you are learning in sd if you learn that in sd you can extrapolate in crm now okay so this is where we were yesterday basic functions and customization so what are the different basic functions we can do now here we have a something called create follow up transaction and the copy so create follow up transaction and copy create follow up transaction and the copy now look at my screen so when i go to transaction for example if i go to sales if i go to sales order so this is uh, let us i'm trading a transaction now we see here my cursor this is called create follow up transaction 
create so this is create follow up transaction so now if i take uh, my transaction if i open my transaction okay if you look at here so here we have create follow up transaction and we have something called process transaction now create follow up transaction basically means when you can create one transaction with another transaction so so let's say create follow up transaction so let's say this is what we did yesterday also so i create a quotation and then i create a sales order using create bid reference transaction we did a quotation then we create a sales order with create with the transaction so for example we want to do that this is a actually we did yesterday also so it's just a repeat of what we did yesterday so if i go back if i go back to sales order let us say i want to create a new quotation so this is the quotation erp i enter my customer i enter my product enter my quantity so i'm creating a quotation i put my extra reference number okay i enter my date i enter my partner so i create a quotation and i can save it So we create a quotation. Then I create a sales order with referencing quotation.
okay so this is creating the sales order so this is my quotation now with the quotation if you see here i want to create a sales order okay. and then i can copy i can save and now if i go to document flow if i go to overview this is what happened we created a quotation and then with reference to quotation we created a sales order this is the sales order you can enter the data in the sales order we can enter partner and we can save it Okay. Direct sales quotation. So that is how we can create all of transaction. And there is also copy function. There is also copy function. So we see here. This is the copy function. See that copy, and I click copy, and this copy create a new transaction now. And we save it. So now. system created i save it i see here 5002606 so we created a new transaction and if i go to copy control document flow there is no document flow because this is a complete new transaction so we create a follow function then we use copy function in copy function we created a new sales order by copying an existing sales order here because is a create with reference so there is a copy control and here there is no copy so there is a copy control and there is no copy control okay. so we can use both functionalities in the sap space okay
So we have a trade with follow function. Trade with copy. Now there is something called copy control. This concept we have discussed in SD, and now we are talking about in CRM. Make a note of these three lines which I highlighted. Copy control. If you remember, we talked about this copy control concept in SAP SD also. And now we are talking about this copy control function here. So we talked about copy control function before, and we are talking about copy control function again. Make a note of these three lines which I highlighted. Copy control. Copy control. So what basically we talked about and what basically we can do using copy control between the two different transactions, we can create a copy control. So like we create a sales order between quotation then between the quotation and the sales order, there is a copy control. If there is a copy control between quotation and the order, then you can create one document to another. If there is no copy control, you cannot create one transaction from other. You cannot create a sales order from the quotation if there is no copy control between sales order and quotation. You define copy control at the header label. You also define copy control at the line item label. And that you can do. Now we, I want to do an exercise. Of copy control. Copy control exercise. Copy control exercise I'm going to do. In a copy control exercise, if I go back to my uh, Previous sales order, this is a 606. If I go to 605, there's a document flow. And there is a document flow between quotation and sales order. So you can create a sales order with reference to 
quotation. So you can do that. So you can do copy control between a sales order and quotation. We can do that. That is possible. Now, look at my screen. So let's say so I want to create a quotation. This is a document of AG. This is I'm doing a third time. So I'm putting doing a quotation. This is third time I'm doing this exercise. It's just a repeat. Enter my partner function. And then we save it. Now, if I change this, and um, If I go to create fallen function, look at carefully. I have a three options. I have a business activity, which we did yesterday. We also have an option of creating a daily sales order. We also have an option of creating a task. So we have a three options. So if I want to create a follow-up transaction, then if you look at carefully, we have the three options. <clears throat> now why i do see the three options So here, I get three options, right? And if I want to get a telesales, I get a telesales. We did it yesterday. We did this today also. We copy. We save it. Okay. So we get another transaction, 5002608. If I go to document flow, if I go to overview, then I can see that quotation and sales order. I have created sales order with reference to quotation. So we have created uh, these transactions in the system. So we are able to create these transactions in the system automatically. Okay. We are able to do that. Now, so what we did in copy control, we 
were we created rotation with a standard rotation dock type ag then we created sail order with reference to quotation and this uh, document type was ta we did this third time we did it this yesterday also so we were able to create a quotation with reference to a sale order So we are able to create a quotation in this order. Now I want to create a quotation with reference to our custom quote doc type, which is G zero twelve. So yesterday we created. A Transaction document is zero twelve. That is what we want to do. Okay. So now, back, back, maintain quotation document type. Okay. Now I want to select my document type, and then uh, we can choose the document type which we created. And uh, yesterday was yeah. So this was the document I we created Z twelve fifteen eighteen. Okay. And I verify the document I with Z zero twelve. Okay. So now I want to create a, do the same step with my document I and then see what happens. I enter my item. Enter my quantity. Enter my Partner, sales employee. So now I'm creating a quotation with reference to the trans document I created. This is also we did yesterday. So now I create a quotation with reference to the document. So now, look at carefully. I go to change mode. I go to create person. Do you see any difference now? Is there any difference now?
डी से डिफरेंस टू ऑप्शन ओनली यस दस करेक्ट वी ओनली हैव टू ऑप्शन अर्लियर वी एड थ्री ऑप्शन द ऑप्शन ऑफ क्रेडिंग सेल्स ऑर्डर इज नॉट देयर Last time we have a three option. This time we have a two option. And the reason for it, now we don't have an option of ability to create a sales order. So I cannot. We cannot create a sales order. and why that is the case because there is no copy control so now i want to do configuration of copy control between doc type z012 and ca Make a note. And then we can do copy control between item category Z zero twelve because copy control is the both level. That is the configuration we cannot do. these are the two configuration we can do make a note of it make a note please okay so copy control between doc type z012 and ta and between item category z012 and 10 Okay. Now, I want to go to configuration. I want to set up the copy control. I go to customer relations and mismanagement, transactions, basic settings, copy control for the transaction. Make a note of this menu part, please. This is where the configuration is. This is the configuration for the copy control. Please take a note. Make a note, please. Okay. So define copy control for transaction type. <coughs> define copy control for item categories. Define copy control for transaction type. now here there is a source transaction type and there is a target transaction type in the source 
we have a quotation i select this and this is a g and t i select that i copy rather than a g i make it z012 because i want to set the copy control between z012 and t a and then we save it and then we hit enter data was saved back then i want to do copy control for item category to item category if i select that and here we have agn and teen agn is a standard item category for quotation and tan is a standard item category for sales order these item category names agn tan tn is kind of a common and constant between sd and in crm so they are constant on both sides and then we copy this and we save it. now after setting this up i did this configuration then i want to test it in for the testing i want to do create a quotation doc type i go to maintain sales order enter the product enter the partner And then we save it. So now we get a quotation. Now I want to go to follow-on function, and now I have another transaction. Now it allows. now i am able to create a sales order with my document type because there is a copy control now it allows me to do the copy control and then we save it if i see doc flow if i go to overview that is what we see here So now this is my quotation document, and with this quotation, we create a sales order. So now between tele sales and the quotation, we are able to create a transaction. Now that is possible.
okay that is how the copy control works you said customer relationship mismanagement is it management no it's a mismanagement sir mismanagement okay make a note of this 1 2 3 these four lines which i highlighted please make a note four lines which i highlighted please make a note four lines which i highlighted please make a note Make a note of these lines, please. Now, what we are saying here is, you can also use some data transfer routine and copy routine. We talked about that concept in SD also. It is the same concept here as well. so here we have a some data transfer routine and copy routine in the data transfer routine and copy routine you can write a program and in the program you can define what data to be copied and what data not to be copied that can be defined so you have a transaction history transaction flow or document flow this is the document flow you can see the document flow in sd you can also see document flow in crm is a both the same concept document flow copy control we talked about we did that exercise between transaction transaction item category to item category item category determination copy control so you can also define this is also concept constant on both side sd and in crm that you can define that if you are doing a copy of a document type a to document type b then based upon copy control you can suggest item category in the target document also so look at here the last setting so item category in the target document can be influenced by what is my source item category and what is my target document type so by these two parameters i can also control my item category in the target document as well if you want to this is the menu path for copy control this is where we went so make a note of it if you have not made a note of it
Now make a note, there is something called subsequent referencing. And make a note of this one, two, three lines. Type this. Please make sure that you're typing. And I'm asking you to do type, then type. When you write with your own hands, it helps you. So when I'm asking to type, please do type. Subsequent referencing. Subsequent referencing basically means that after you create one document, you can, if those are the two documents which has been created independently, then you can reference them subsequently. So we have a so let us say one document, second document, third document. They've been created independently up front. They've not been created with the reference. And after the fact, if you want to create them with the reference, then you can create them with the reference. That is called subsequent referencing. For that, you need to have a, something called object relationship profile. Make a note of that. So if you have an object referencing profile, then Okay. Object reference profile. Now we have some other basic functions. So in SAP, you can do tax determination, you can do date determination, you can do a status profile, you can do incompletion check, you can do partner processing, you can do action profile, you can do pricing. All these different functions happens in a transaction. We're going to talk about it. The first and foremost, there is a note. Note in the transaction. If you look at this transaction, so this is a transaction we created. This is a quotation transaction we created. Look at carefully. Here we have a tax. This is the text. Text could be a header, and text can also be at the line item level. Text appears twice. Now, here in the text, if I want to type anything, I can type whatever I want. If I go to customer wish, and if I want to type anything, if I go to final note, if I want to internal note, if I go to problem description,
now from where these notes are coming this text So here we can have all these different notes. So here we can do different header node, customer requirement, internal node, header node, customer requirement, final node, internal node, problem description. These are the texts or notes in the transactions. Text and notes allow you to type So now here, Now look at here, look at this picture. So here we have a, something called tax determination procedure. In the tax determination procedure, we can link that procedure to a transaction type, and I can link it to a item category. So we can have a tax determination procedure, and I can link this tax determination procedure to a transaction type and item category. Now, what is the procedure we're going to look into? It. I would like you guys to make a note where you can define and assign your transaction type, item category to a tax determination procedure. So take this submission procedure, we can assign to a transition type, and we can assign to item category. Okay. Now I wanna take, um, ten minutes break. And we'll talk after 10 minutes. So 10 minute break. And we'll talk after 10 minutes. Okay, I'm back now, guys. So we're talking about the text determination procedure. This is where we left. Text determination procedure or text or the notes are used for the purpose of defining the field attributes. You can write any comment. And that is what this is used for. Any kind of a comment, you can write. That is the text determination procedure. Then text determination procedure assigned to a transition type and text determination procedure is assigned to item category. Make a note of these two, please. 
So tax determination procedure assigned to transaction type and tax decision procedure assigned to item category. Now, where is this? So, I want to do text determination exercise. In the text determination exercise, I have a text determination procedure assigned to transaction type. Now where it is? Text determination procedure assigned to transaction type. So I, for that I go to configuration, I go to SPR. So I go to SPRO. We could say reference IMG. Then we go to customer relationship management. Then we go to transactions. Then we go to basic settings. Then we go to different transaction type. This is the same menu path we went before. Now I select my transaction type which is G012. I select that. I go to the details. Now here, my transaction type G012 is assigned to tax determination procedure order 001. So what we saw is that tax determination procedure is assigned to transaction type Z0. So. Okay. Now I want to verify. Definition of tax determination procedure orders 001. Now I want to do that exercise. I go back, I go to SPRO, go back, back, I go to basic functions, and here in the basic function, we have partner determination. And here we have defined partner determination procedure. Make a note of it. No, not partner, sorry, text. Text, text, text. So text is in below. So this is the text, not partner. And this is the partner text determination procedure. So make a note of it. This is the menu part. 
for defining. So here we have a tax determination procedure. Make a note of the menu part. We go to tax determination procedure. And if you go back here, we have a transaction header. Then we go to procedures. And we have so many procedures here. I want to choose my procedure, which is order 001. In this procedure, then we go to definitions. And now in this procedure, this is what we have. So in this procedure, order 001, look at carefully. We have a header note, customer wish, final note, internal note, problem description. One, two, three, four, five. So we have these five part uh, text types. Okay. Now, if I look at here in the transaction, quotation transaction, we have one, two, three, four, five. So these five are coming from, these five are coming from this text procedure. So in this text procedure, we have these five Okay, so these five text type is coming from because here in this text procedure we have these five text types. That is what we see here. That is what we see here. This is the menu path for the text procedure. Okay. Now I want to do a configuration. So I want to configure a new text procedure by copying a standard. Make changes to new text determination procedure. Assign new procedure to our transaction type. Make a note of these steps. This is the exercise we want to do.
ओके ओके नाउ वी कम बैक हियर आई वांट टू कंफिगर एनी प्रोसीजर दिस इज द प्रोसीजर वी कॉपी I want to create a new procedure. First letter G and Y. Copy all. All the five text type is copied. We save it. So this is the text visualization procedure. If I go to the detail, so this is the new text visualization procedure we configured. So we created procedure Z zero 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 one twelve. Now I want to make a change to this text visualization procedure. So this is my Z zero zero twelve procedure. If I go back, I can choose my procedure. I can go to definition. So here, I have a five text IDs: header node, customer base, final node, internal node, product description. That is what the five text ID we see here. Now from here. If I want to remove some, I can remove something. So I don't want this, for example. Internal load, I don't want this, for example. Final load, I don't want this, for example. So I removed three. I save it. Then I select that and I copy. And then I have a problem description. I want to add something. i can put a solution description and we save it so that is what we have so a customer wish problem description and the solution description so we have these things i go back now i want to assign i made a change and i i want to assign new procedure to the transaction type z0 term so back back We have a transaction, different transaction type. I have a transaction Z zero twelve. I select. I go into the details. This is my tax return procedure. I remove it. I assign the new tax return procedure I created, and I say. 
So I have uh, created a new tax determination procedure. I made some changes into that. I removed the two tax ID. I added one tax ID. So I have a three tax ID now. And I have assigned my tax determination procedure to my transaction type. And now I want to test it. So earlier in my quotation, I see these five. Now see what happens. Okay. Exit out. I want to go to sales thought. I select my quotation. So this is the quotation 12, 15, 18. G012. And if I go to text here, now I see the three. Earlier I was seeing five. Now I only see three. And the reason I see three because two I deleted and one I added. So I left with the three text types. Okay. So that is how the tax determination procedure works. Now we go to the date management. This is the date management. One, two, three. Make a note of these three. Okay, date management. Date management allow you to process as many dates as possible in a document. So in every document, quotation, sales order, contract, we can have a different dates. We have a So we have a date management. So date management. You can have a different dates. And then we, so let us have a look at the quotation here. Here we have some date. If you see here, so if you see the date, we have valid from valid to.
so here we have a date valid from valid to valid from today's date valid to is today's date plus two weeks now i did not enter these dates these dates come automatically these dates come automatically i did not enter those dates okay how come these dates are coming from where these dates are coming that is what we want to understand that is coming from the date management in icp you can define date type date rule date type date rule so there is a transition type and transition type is linked to item category and an item category is linked to a date profile so here we have date profile item category and transition type so 1 2 3 three boxes link them three boxes link them so you can have your transaction type link to a date profile you can have item category link to a date profile you can have a date at the header label you can have a date at the line item label So we can have date profile, and date profile is linked to item category, and linked to item category to both of them. That you can do in a standardized system. let's do the configuration so i want to do date profile configuration so i want to do date profile exercise the first want to verify verify date profile assignment to transaction type is assigned to transaction type okay
then i want to verify definition of get profile let's do that so i go to configuration so this is in svro it's a configuration this is svro now in the spro if i go to transaction type then transaction type is linked to a date profile code 001 is the date profile so date profile assignment to the transaction type z012 so date profile code 001 is assigned to a transaction type z012 that is what we are verifying now i want to verify the definition of date profile so now i back back close this is the date management this is the date management make a note of this profile that is where we have a defined date profile this is the menu path and please make a note of the menu path we go to date profile this is a code 001 now here this is my date profile this is my date profile then i can see the date rules and here i have a today's date validated as of 2 weeks so if i go back here today's date today's date valid as of plus 2 weeks valid as of plus 2 weeks we can have these dates being assigned okay. so now and you can also see you see that here is screen area assignment so you will see that valid from valid to what area they are assigned to now one thing which i want to talk back 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 now here we define date type date rules and if i click here if i click here
So here we have a different date. This is the date rules. This is the different date rules. So this is a quote uh, valid from valid to which you're talking about the quote valid from valid to if I go to the detail if I double click on it this is XML code So this is the XML code. That basically means the date rule is an XML program. If you want to change the date rules, then you have to change XML program. That is the most important point. The next one is the status management. Then look at carefully. There is a system based status and user status. System is status maintained by SAP automatically. User status can be defined by the user. I would like you guys to make a note of that term, which is system is status and the user is status. So please make a note of this. It says system is status and user is status. So make a note of that. System is status and user is status. Make a note of these two. System is status and user is status. We have two things system is status and user is status. System is status is a status set up by the system SAP automatically. User is status is a status set up by the user. And you can define your own status profile. Now look at my screen. If you look at this quotation, here I have status. This is system status. This is user status. System is status set up by the system. User status is changed by the user. It is user's choice. System is status, user is status. I would like you guys to make a note of this menu path. This is where you can define the status profile. Make a note of this menu path. I want to do some configuration. So I want to do status profile exercise in that uh, I want to configure sorry I want to verify status profile assigned to transaction type Z012 Verify definition of status profile. 
configure a new status profile assign status profile to transaction type then test it verify new status in code so that is what i want to do and we can take a 10 minutes break and we'll talk about them so 10 minute break okay <clears throat> I'm back now. So we're going to talk about the status profile. We're going to verify what the status profile is there and how it is assigned to a transaction type. We also want to talk about the definition. of a status profile how do you configure a new status profile i'm going to assign an status profile to a transaction type these are 12 and i'm going to test it so all the configuration i'm going to do so i go back 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 now i scroll down i go to transactions and uh, here in the transaction we have a status profile and define a status profile okay. make a note of that Make a note of this menu path. This is the menu path where you can have a status profile defined. Define a status profile. Now, first and foremost, I want to check what status profile is assigned to a transaction type. So I go to transaction type. I select transaction type Z012. V012, we select, we go to detail, okay, we have this is status profile assigned crm order i select that go back go back and then here we have a status profile i select that put the position i put my instead of crm order i go to the detail so these are the these are the different uh, statuses are there in it created sent accepted rejected and the initial stock is sent that is why we have a sent here and why we have a sent because sent is being assigned here that is why we have it sent.
okay now i want to create a new procedure i want to select that i want to copy copy we save it so this is the new profile we created this is 0 now here if i want to assign uh, various statuses i can define various statuses Okay, so here, uh, let's say I have a UC1 quotation 1, so we can say quote created UC2, so we say quote sent to customer then we have a QC3 quote accepted by customer QC4 quote rejected by customer and i want code created to initially stop i want to add another status as well you see five no update from customer Customer is not given us any update. Okay. No update from the customer. We created this. So I make a note of this, save it back. Okay, back. We're going to define transaction type. I select my transaction V012, double click, I go to status profile, and then we save it. 
So we have assigned a new status profile to a transaction type. Now here, when we go to status, and now we have a status code created. Why status code created? Because that is my initial status. And then we can have code sent to the quotation. That is how we can define the status. Okay, so that is what we did. The status profile. We have something called incompleteness check. Incompleteness check is same. Uh, we did that exercise in SD as well. Similar concept is on both sides. So if you understand uh, the, this concept on uh, SD, you can apply in CRM and vice versa. The same concept applies on both sides okay the same concept applies on both sides you can have same concept in our SD and you also have the same concept in CR incompleteness same concept this is the menu path. If you want, you can make a note of the menu path where you can define an incompletion log. You can assign your incompletion procedure to a transaction and to a business partner. Make a note of these three pictures, uh, figure 77. Make a note of that, what you see in the figure 77. Where you can assign your incompletion procedure. Okay, so you can assign your incompletion check in the customizing. So incompletion procedure, same concept. We talked about that in SD as well. Same concept applies. We did this all configuration. Now the next topic I want to do is related to activity management. So the next unit is related to activity management. Activity management. Activity management is a unique feature and function to SAP CRM. You cannot do SAP that activity management in ECC. That is not allowed. That is not possible. You can only do this functionality in CRM in which you can divide activity, you can create your own activity type also, and there are certain configuration related to activity as well. In SAP CRM, you can do different kind of activity. You're making a phone call is activity. You have customer visit activity. You have to make a customer demo activity. You have a customer visit activity. You are doing a staff meeting activity. So if we talk about uh, management people, 
senior management specifically, they're normally getting involved with a lot of these different activities. So sales orders and quotations and all that is normally done by the staff member. So when we talk about the senior management, we do different type of activities. And that is what these transitions are done or can be done in SAPCR. I would like you guys to make a note of these four blood points. So make a note of these four blood points, business activity and task. So all activities in SAPCRM are divided into these four, the, these two different kind of categories. One is called business activity, and the second one is called task. Business activity can be divided into two different categories. Business activity and the task. Now business activity has a business partner. So business activity, when you have an activity which is linked to a customer and to a partner, that is called business activity. Task is not business activity. Task is just an internal task. You're doing a staff meeting. That is a task. So task does not have a business partner. And business activity has a partner in it. That is one of the primary difference in a business activity and the task. So you can have activity structure where you can define activities. Or activity could be anything. Customer meet, this visit, a call, email, demo, internal tasks, staff meeting. They could be all different kind of, uh, uh, all these different kind of activities which are possible in SAPCRF. So you can have uh, various different kind of activities. So the important thing is business activity must have a partner and business activity must have a start date and end date. These are the two very important things. These are the two very important things. Business activity has a partner and business activity has a start date and the end date. Task does not have a partner. Business activity has a partner. So incoming call, outgoing phone call, interaction. But if you see the 002, 0003, technical level, at technical level, all these activities are nothing but the transaction like quotation, like sales order, like contract, so many of the transactions that we do. These activities are nothing but the transactions as well. Okay. And you can create activity and all that. We're going to do that exercise. Okay. So let us do an activity. So I want you to create an activity exercise. I want to create an activity. If I go back here, if I go back, 
and here we have a maintain activity. Make a note of this menu part. This is maintain activity. And this is where different activities can be done. So we go to maintain activity. I go to drop down. And you can define different activities. I want to make it, I have a customer appointment. So appointment with the customer. Which customer? I can put the customer name. Okay. I can put a location, customer location, region, goal, Completion, high, medium, low, what is the priority? Again, you get to see the business partner. You will see the text. You can have a question I. You can put a question into it. Any kind of relationship with any other object, you can link it to. Attachment, you can attach any external document. You can set up an address. You can put an organization, sales organization, date, and you can have an action. Okay. And then we can set. This is an example of creation of an activity. What basically we have done, we have created an activity in the standard SAP system. Now I have created one activity called appointment. Similarly, you can do as many as activities as possible, a different kind of activities. You can define your own activities. Activity type is configurable. In fact, we're gonna do that. And that is our next topic. Customizing activity and various other functions. Now I'm stopping the class. And we have a discussion next week. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.